So we are talking about tank destroyers again. Yes, uh, it's something that for some reason whenever I talk about on my channel with tank destroyers, everybody gets highly upset. Uh, there's no such thing as tank destroyers post-1945, blah, blah, blah. Yes, I understand. Uh, everybody's definition of tank destroyers is very different. Uh, but this is designated as a tank destroyer, the vehicle we're talking about today, which is the IT-1, uh, which is basically Russian for Istrobitel Tankov, or tank destroyer. It's actually designated as a tank destroyer. But before we get into the tank destroying world, we're going to quickly talk about the ship destroying world. And this video is sponsored by World of Warships, which is a free to play game available for PC. Top notch graphics and more than 40 unique maps with dynamic weather and compromising of World of Warships pristine looking ships that have been updated with stunning new water effects and textures that make the game's seas virtually indistinguishable from the real deal. There are multiple ship classes, mine myself is favourite of course is the Iowa class or the Flower class because of course Canada, and you can conquer the oceans aboard battleships, destroyers, aircraft carriers, cruisers and give all depths to call in in your own submarines. Yes, you can actually sail the seven seas in a submarine taking out even the biggest ships it's got new content released every month, whether it be new ships, in-game nations, cosmetics, or even ship classes, you can always count on enjoying some fresh gameplay experiences with World of Warships in massive 12v12 arenas. You can play as a lone wolf or in a division with your friends. I myself like to play with a couple of the guys on a Friday night blasting out some armor with the big old 16-inch battleship guns. And of course, World of Warships is a fantastic archive of information on the history and technical data of some of these beautiful warships. Oh, and did I mention that it's also available on consoles? Yes, you don't have to just check it out on PC. Consoles are playing it too. If you want to play it yourself, feel free to check out the links in the description box below and my comments for the promo code, which will be BRAVO to get a huge starter pack. You're going to get a free 500 doubloons, 1.5 million credits, 7 days of premium account time, and 1 free choice of ship after you complete 15 battles. USS Phoenix, Japanese cruiser Kuma, French battleship Courbet, an Italian battleship Dante Algeri, and HMS Wakeful. Feel free to check that link below and use the promo code BRAVO to get that reward. Really, really fun game, guys. Go check it out with World of Warships. So, as mentioned before, we are talking about tank destroyers today. Uh, specifically, an anti-tank guided missile tank destroyer. Uh, placed upon a tank chassis, which is kind of interesting. You don't see that very often uh, in either history or in modern day times. And of course, the tank destroyer is somewhat of a old technology nowadays, really. Uh, but it's perhaps best known as the series of Soviet tanks armed with the anti-tank missiles instead of a conventional gun, and is essentially a T-62 with a Draken ATGM launching system installed inside of it. Uh, its designation is a bit of a throwback, though, to the IT series of the light tank destroyers designed mostly before and during the Second World War, but there was nothing obsolete about this vehicle by the time it was actually conceived. The Second World War is often considered to be the golden age of tanks, but if the 1940s belonged to the gun, it can be said that the 1950s and 60s were definitely marked by a certain fascination, by all countries at that time, by guided missiles. The first version of this vehicle, referred to as the Object 150 from December 1957, was to be used as a modified version of the Object 140 prototype tank. The Object 140 was designed as a competitor for the Object 430, but did it not pass into production. It's however worth noting that the design documents mentioned other platforms as well, such as the Object 167 and the Object 17T. The idea of the vehicle was to design a lighter version of the tank with only four road wheels, thinner armour, approximately 20% less protection compared to the T-55 tank, and no gun. It was replaced by the Draken launcher that was installed on top of the turret. A lever arm would lower itself towards the turret, receive the missile from an automatic feed mechanism inside, ready itself for firing, and then launch the missile. In other words, apart from the time directly before the launch, the missiles were always stored inside the tank. The missiles would be guided by a stabilised T2S sighting system and a day and lunar P systems at night. The system would carry up to 15 missiles. Fully loaded, the whole thing would weigh some 32 tonnes and would be powered by a standard tank diesel engine. All in all, it was quite well protected as a tank destroyer with excellent frontal armour that could use an NBC system, which was very important at the time with the threat of nuclear war, very real in the minds of its strategists, and could be sealed from underwater crossings. 
As a bonus, the vehicle was lower than the T-55, giving it a bit more of an advantage in combat. However, this vehicle had a number of flaws. The missiles were massive and very difficult to place and reload. The missiles had a very complicated stabilization system, reducing their reliability. Many launch elements were located at the top of the turret, making them quite vulnerable to enemy fire. Three out of the 15 missiles carried were located outside of the automatic rack and can only be reloaded when the turret was positioned in a specific way. The loading process was fully mechanized. In a case where the loader was somehow damaged, the missile could not be loaded manually by the crew and basically put the vehicle completely out of action, which is something you don't see in more modern day auto loaders for tanks of the Russian origin. Additionally, each missile was stored in a rather heavy container that significantly increased the weight per missile. In any case, this early draft involved some raw estimates as the KB-1 Design Bureau didn't share the actual data required to complete the project until months later. The first two Object 150 mock-ups based on the T-55 chassis were ready by April 1959 and were transferred to Kobinka in September. But the missile system was still not quite ready yet for testing, and planned 1959 tests were officially moved to 1963. Yes, it took almost four years to get all the kinks ironed out. One of the biggest reasons for the delay of this project was the interference from Khrushchev. What happened was roughly this. In July 1960, Khrushchev came to the Karpasin VR proving grounds to take a look at the various missile vehicles, including the Object 150. When the vehicle prototype was introduced to the Soviet leader, Khrushchev started demanding high-tech features nobody else wanted at the time, such as missile wings opening in mid-flight and replacing the mechanized ammo rack with a drum-like automatic loader. While he wasn't completely unrealistic with his ideas, some of these ideas required huge amounts of time and money to develop and would not appear for years to come. Because of the debate and consideration of these ideas, it cost the Soviets even more time in developing the project. As I mentioned before, until 1961, various platforms were considered for the vehicle, including the Object 167. In 1961, the final platform was finally selected, the T-62 tank, which at the time replaced the T-55 production. Between 1962 and 1963, a series of tests of prototypes of this new iteration took place. The biggest change was the new loading mechanism that was mostly hidden inside the vehicle, and was working with a rate of 2 to 3 rounds per minute. Unlike before, the loading arm launcher was, for the most of the time, hidden inside the vehicle and covered by an armoured plate. It only appeared outside the vehicle when it was readying itself to fire. The vehicle was also compared to the Object 432 medium tank armed with the 150mm Molot smoothbore gun. The Object 432 would become the T-64, and the results were fairly interesting. The Object 150 could kill enemy tanks at longer ranges, 3.5 km compared to 3 km. At a distance of 2 to 3 km, the Object 150 could kill 2 to 3 more times as tanks as the Object 432. On average, the ammunition carried allowed it to kill 10 more tanks compared to the Object 432's 6 tanks. In 1964, two or more of less of the finalized Object 150 vehicles were tested and fared pretty good, leading to an order of 10 vehicles and 300 missiles to be delivered in 1965 in order to subject them to even more trials. Several more flaws were uncovered and fixed, and finally, on September 3rd, 1968, the vehicle was accepted into service under the designation of the IT-1. Finally, Russia had its missile anti-tank destroyer. The production version of the IT-1 weighed 35 tons and had the same armour as that of the T-62 medium tank. It had the same engine too and could go as fast as 50 km an hour. It could carry 15 9M7 improved Dracon missiles. The 3M7 was renamed to the 9M7 due to the change in the military nomoculture system. Twelve of these missiles were mechanised in a magazine that could be launched while the vehicle was going as fast as 20 km an hour. The missiles had to be somewhat pre-programmed and pre-installed into the vehicle ready for firing, which took time and calibration. It's worth noting that the vehicle's speed had relatively low impact though on the missile's accuracy. Now believe it or not, the vehicle actually worked very well for its time, but unfortunately, just like most Soviet tanks and programs of its time, it had one major problem. Delays. Like many solid vehicles before it and after it, it became the victim of major delays on the program. It simply came too late, as by 1968, the concept of a dedicated tank destroyer was completely obsolete. 
The IT-1 could not fit into standard tank formations as it could not participate in close combat due to its minimum range of 300 meters and, if used at long distances, its thick armor was actually pointless and the missile carrier role could be performed by more lightly armored BMPs. Furthermore, the Soviets came to the conclusion that rather than a supporting dedicated missile carriers like the IT-1, it was far more efficient to support gun-launched ATDM missiles retrofitting standard tanks with it. As a result of these considerations, it was decided to produce the IT-1 in very limited numbers only. Between 1966 and 1970, 220 vehicles were built along with these several thousand Draken missiles. These vehicles were split into two dedicated tank destroyer battalions, one located in Belarus and the other one in the Carpathian military district. The vehicle was generally very reliable, but due to its limited production, it suffered from a lack of spare parts. An issue that turned quite serious starting from 1970 onwards and eventually resulted in its complete removal from active service between 1972 and 1973. The vehicle was never exported and never fire a shot in anger. After being phased out, some IT-1s were converted to the BTS-4V tractors and others had their armament removed and served as training vehicles. As for the Draken missile itself, its development was an important lesson for the Soviets a lesson that would be applied in future ATGM developments. So it's safe to say this vehicle was left on the drawing board for far too long, too much improvements were required, uh, lots of umming and ahhing, ooh, should we do this, should we do that? Uh, people were sticking their nose in where they didn't need to be, uh, teams that were developing it just weren't getting along, uh, and it was just kind of doomed from the start with all these things taken into consideration. If the vehicle was actually capitalized on a little bit more and was focused on a bit more, it could have had a successful future, but as mentioned, the tank destroyer in this formation and this consideration just isn't applicable for the modern battlefield. There's no requirement to have just a tank that launches missiles when you have cheaper, faster, more nimble vehicles that can carry more and quicker accurate missiles than that of a main battle tank. So there you have it folks, a doomed from the start somewhat tank destroyer for the Soviet army back in the day. A really cool concept though, I absolutely love the way that missile is pulled out of the uh, turret like that big fat chunky high explosive anti-tank missile to take out you know what at the time was uh, fairly lightly armored vehicles of nato doctrine uh, but i just was kind of sad to know that it was just never going to be a thing they kind of just got rid of it uh, and it just makes sense it's just not a vehicle that makes much practical sense back in those days uh, it was just too late to the party i guess so i hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about the it1 today make sure that if you did enjoy you leave me a like so uh, we can get that youtube algorithm juices flowing i really appreciate everyone supporting the channel recently leaving comments and likes and sharing it around on your own social media it really does mean a lot if you want to support my channel furthermore uh, please go check out my patreon page uh, if you wish to donate or support on there and thank you to everyone who's been doing so it really does mean a lot to me uh, you can check out also my other social media links below in the link description box i've got instagram facebook all the other usual stuff um, i do really appreciate you all being here today and again if you want to be notified of any upcoming videos in the future make sure you hit the little bell button by the subscribe button so you can be notified of when it's coming okay folks stay safe in all this crazy times and i uh, hope to see you on the next video all the best bye bye